All right, so we just delivered this. This is our friend Danny. Yay! Say hi, Danny. Hello! <laughs> People. <laughs> Do you like your desk? Do you like I it? I love it. It is more than I could ever ask for. Oh, Yay. We're so glad you're happy. Thank so, you so much! Yeah. Okay, so we have a friend who's going back to school and she really needed a desk. And she'd seen some of our other projects that we've done in the past and even a couple of desks that we built for some of our other friends. And so she came right to us and she was like, hey guys, I need a desk. I need a big desk. Can you do this for me? We're like, absolutely, for sure. And that's kind of where we left it because we were just texting her about it. And then I ended up taking the sales call on this one and I was really, really nervous about it because it was my first sales call that I had ever done. Um, so I didn't have like a whole lot of practice but I felt like I could, I felt like I could handle it. So you remember in one of our previous videos where I, I'd closed a sales call? All right, so Jenny just got off the phone with her first real sales call. Yay! Uh, I asked to film it, <laughs> she didn't want to. Yeah, that was, that was this one. So I didn't record the sales call because I was pretty nervous and quite honestly, I didn't want to play it back. It was a terrible idea because the best way to grow your sales abilities is to record your calls, watch them no matter how painful and awkward it is, and then grow from it. So. We're gonna read the whole thing for you right now. It's a long number. Hi, Danny, it's Jenny. Hey, girl, what's up? Hey, yeah, I was just calling to talk a little bit about your desk. Yeah, I have a few minutes. Yeah, totally. Okay, so I know you wanted it to be a pretty big desk, but my main question for you is how long do you want it to last? So basically, do you want it to just last a year or do you want it to survive a few moves? I guess, like I want it to last a while. I don't know, probably like maybe two or three moves. Okay, cool. So it sounds like you want it to be pretty sturdy. We can definitely make it to last a few moves. So now that we've determined you want it like really high quality and really sturdy, uh, how, how nice or how fancy do you want it to be? Cause honestly, I can put LED lights in it. I can put cup holders in it. We can make your $10,000 desk if you want it. We just have to determine where you want to be on budget. <laughs> yeah, as much as I wish I could say yes to that and have some LED lights and stuff all over the desk, don't think I can go that high because, you know, school in and of itself is super expensive. This is getting old. <laughs> Sweet, so yeah, based on what we've discussed, honestly, we could go anywhere between $1,000 and $3,000. Um, we could add features like, for example, wireless charging. We could put a wireless charging port in the desk. Does your phone do wireless charging? Yeah, so my phone doesn't do wireless charging actually, so I don't think I'd need that. Um, but yeah, probably staying around like 1500. That would probably work out well for me. Yeah, perfect. So we'll keep it right under 1500 for you. That sounds great. Um, we'll make sure we do have a hole in the top so you can have a little bit of cord management toward the back. So then are there any other like specific designs or anything else you need incorporated into the design aspect of the desk? Yeah, actually. So I just bought a bunch of furniture uh, online and it's like two end tables and a coffee table. And the only bummer was that they didn't have a desk that matched the rest of, I guess, the furniture that I bought in, in a little kit. Um, but all of them have some colorful slats on the bottom of them, kind of like a, an additional shelf. So I am wondering if we can kind of incorporate that into the desk. I don't know how you guys want to do it. Like I trust you, I'll leave it up to you. I'll shoot you some pictures. But yeah, there's just a little colorful shelf on the bottom of each of them. Yeah, we can totally do that. Just send us the pictures and we'll match as best we can. So we're gonna go work on the design a little bit and we will send you an email within the hour on what our plans are. Ah, your hat. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds great. I will be waiting for your email. I'm super excited to see what you guys come up with. Seriously, I, I, I trust you. I think it's gonna look awesome. So at this point, we were just really excited that she agreed to a $1,500 desk because we just thought we were gonna build our smaller desk for maybe like three or 400 bucks, kind of like some of the other smaller desks, like writing desks we've done in the past. So we were just super stoked that this was gonna be a really big, high quality build. So we got to use some really nice thick hardwoods. We got to incorporate different design elements like, like using wood dye to incorporate the colors of her other furniture into the shelves. It was just really exciting. We got to do a bunch of stuff that we don't always get to do.
Jenny. Are yes. you gonna Are you gonna go back to school? No. Why not? No. You don't want to get your master's? Not really. Not right now. Is it because you're not smart? Go, uh, excuse you? No, it's not because I'm not smart. I'm just sick of being a student. I was a student for a very long time. And I'm just about done. It, that's, it's work. Not in a bad way. Not because I'm lazy. But like, I, yeah. No, not anytime soon. Why? I don't know. It just got me thinking. Because, you know, we just built that desk for Danny. And she's going back to school. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering. She's one smart cookie. Yeah, she is. Since a lot of our friends are going back to school, you know what a lot of those friends need? Books. Besides books and money. Tuition, yeah. <laughs> no. A desk. But really though, think about it. When was the last time you had a desk? Probably high school or something, right? You worked at a, a desk? You worked at desks I mean, yeah. in school? I mean... Yeah, and in college you'd like go to the library or something. Yeah. You wouldn't really study in But your think apartment. about it now. If, if you're doing like an online degree... You don't really go to the library and use a desk. You don't have a desk in your classroom anymore because it's not high school, but you still need a place to do your work and organize, right? I guess that does explain why we've been selling a lot of desks recently. Yeah. So we've yeah, been selling a lot of desks. that can be a tip for you is just find something that the people that you spend a lot of time with are all doing and then find a product that matches what they're doing and sell it to them. Yeah. Like what are people into? What are people a fan of? And figure out what you can build them and provide them to match what is already happening. For us, there's a lot of students. A lot of people start to want to go back to school. How convenient, make them desks. We told her we were going to have it finished and done and completed before Workbench Con. And so. then it got to 25 below zero for a week and a half that top, straight. That top was sitting on the workbench for, oh, good Lord, like five or six yep. days. And it was like negative 20. There was no way without spending a fortune on propane that I could heat the shop yes. up. And so I texted her. I said, hey, Danny, I'm so sorry. I don't think we're going to be able to get it to you before we go on vacation. Like... I feel terrible. And she was like, no, you can't control the weather. You're fine. Yeah. And we were like, oh, like, whew. those are the kinds of customers that you want to find, which mm -hmm. is why we recommend you start with your friends and family, because they're going to be the most forgiving. They're going to be the ones that understand. They're going to be the ones that are going to just, you've got that relationship there to just fall back on and just, you trust yeah. each other. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll get to this in just a minute, but um, we ended up pricing this project absolutely perfectly. So, yes. um, we did give her a bit of a discount because it was late. Again, mm -hmm. I don't want you to start cutting off prices just because you make little mistakes here and there, but this was a legitimate, this mm -hmm. was like three weeks later than we told her it would be. Um, so we gave her a little bit of a discount, even though she said it was totally fine. So again, just have good customer service and you'll get repeat customers. That's mm -hmm. almost exclusively what we have are repeat customers. Um, and I think it's because we do a really good job of managing their expectations and giving them more value than they think they're paying us. So.
Okay, so one of the people we love to watch and we love to see on Instagram is Sam from DIY Huntress. She does some awesome stuff, and she was one of the people we were most excited to meet and listen to speak at WorkbenchCon, and her whole talk was really about blogs and how to do it and how they are still relevant. Essentially, it's like one hub for all of your information to be stored on. And after hearing her talk, we were like, oh my gosh, we have to create a blog. We have to create a blog. And so we were so ready, we came home to do it. If you wanna hear the whole background story about how we closed the sale on the desk, you can definitely go to the blog, read about it there. I wrote it all down. So that is jennyanddavis.com. That is our official blog, so go check it out. Um, Sam, I hope you're proud. Thank you so much for your talk. We loved it uh, when we were called to action. It's a funny story with this die. Once we got it all mixed up and everything, yeah. I was opening the back door when we were done with each piece. <laughs> so I was pitching the extra die into the snow in the backyard. Well, the first one I did was uh, like brown. So, you know, whatever, just looked like water. The second one I did was red and it looked like <laughs> blood. It looked like somebody had gotten shot. It was like running in through our, our backyard. backyard. And there's snow on the ground so you can see it really well. It was really And funny. I was posting all this on Instagram too. So quick plug, go follow us on Instagram. Uh, we're really hurting for followers over there we're like we're not even at like we're barely at 10% of what we are on YouTube over there yeah. on Instagram but anyway yeah I was posting on there just like zoomed in really close to like the blood spots on the snow <laughs> and I was like table saw accident or or wood die like the most like clickbaity I wouldn't even call that on Instagram it's not like clickbait oh, it was fun. is it <laughs> the, my favorite though was uh, then, then we had a yellow one which looked like I was really dehydrated which yeah. is kind of funny so don't but, eat the yellow snow but my favorite was the blue because the blue looked like like blue blood um <laughs> like drops and so I made a little joke that like I shot a smurf or something like that but it was kind of anyway, funny we got some pretty funny responses it was it was just it was a good time Sometimes Instagram's a good time Go stuff. follow us on Instagram so yeah all in all it was awesome it was a pretty decent payday for us and we had a lot of fun building it so I'm gonna turn it over to Davis and he's gonna tell you all about the numbers all right so we're gonna go over the numbers here real quick uh, on this project so uh, first off, we knew the budget beforehand. That's something that we really like to do. We like to establish a budget with our client and then kind of work backwards from there. Using a, a, such a nice budget like 1500 we were able to use some really thick eight quarter walnut. We actually had to make a four hour drive round trip, which we still worked into the cost of the project. Um, and we were able to get some really nice figured eight quarter walnut to use for the desktop. So that was really nice. Um, so all the materials came to $664. Um, and that's everything. And then labor, it ended up taking 13 hours to build. And so at $30 an hour for labor, uh, that ended up being $450 in labor. Um, we only do, we had a couple questions about this. We only do labor for one person because while one of us is working, the other one's filming. So if it was just a production shop and you're not filming and trying to make YouTube videos, it really is only the labor of one person. So sometimes you'll see both of us working on something, but it averages out to only be the time of one employee. So with our standard 40% markup of $445.60, you add all of that together and it comes out to $1,559. So I feel like we did really well on this project. We budgeted our time and materials really well. Um, yeah, I just, it was really encouraging just to, to hit the nail right on the head um, and kind of estimate while working backwards. So uh, again, this that's just a skill that takes practice. You just gotta keep trying and you know, just keep putting bids out there, doing projects, keeping track of all your time, materials, and hours uh, to get really good at that. 
Um, I'm reading this right off the blog post. All right, so a few of the lessons that we learned during this project was number one, if you don't know how to do something and a customer wants it, say yes and then figure out how to do it later. You wanna make sure you've got enough wiggle room in the budget to figure something like that out, but we knew with the alcohol stains, I had no idea how to actually do that. We just said, yeah, of course we can do that and then figured it out later. Um, obviously, if we hadn't, you know, good communication with your customer and just saying, hey, I'm sorry, this is way out of my scope. I didn't think it was gonna be that difficult. Is there any other way that we can make it up to you? And just good communication with a good customer is really gonna help you out of those situations. So that's why we spend more time finding the right customers instead of just taking anybody on Facebook Marketplace that hits us up. Mm -hmm. So, um, also the golden hour. I'm just gonna make another quick plug for our programs. This has been the most the profitable part of any of our sales pitches is just being able to run downstairs, whip something up in SketchUp and send it to them. And you seal the deal, like you get a written contract via the emails. It's just, there's so many good things that happen when you do the golden hour. So if you wanna learn exactly how we close these deals and make sure they don't get away from us or somebody doesn't call you a couple days later and cancel. Or change their mind halfway through the project because they wanna go in a different direction. Yeah, check out our programs, links in the description. That's the how to sell your work program. All right, so hopefully this inspires you to, I don't know, do another job with a client. Uh, yeah. Close a deal, get out there and, and make some money. There's money to be had. There's plenty of money out there. You just gotta go get it. Oh, if you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe. Uh, that like button really helps us out. It tells YouTube that it's a good video and it should show it to more people. Um, yeah, uh, follow us on Instagram if you wanted real time yes. updates. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please share it with your friends and uh, go make some deals. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. It's getting old. <laughs> oh, your hat. Your hat. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. Jenny doesn't know this, but I got her some flowers a couple days early before Valentine's. We agreed we weren't gonna do anything, but whatever. It's an easy, it's an easy win. What's up, Bruce? As you can see, it is snowing. <laughs>